when you have a look at the stats, the leading two leading um, batters in terms of the averages are Finch and Stoinis, and then there are three Indians of Sharma, Pandya, and then Kumar. Then David Warner, Rahane, Faulkner, Kohli, Jadav, Dhoni, Steve Smith, going down. And then Pandy, Travis Head, Peter Hanscom, Glenn Maxwell, and Matthew Wade. The uh, the superstars of the uh, batting were Rohit Sharma, who ended up with 296 runs and an average just lo less than 60. Uh, Aaron Finch, who only played three of the games, scoring 250 runs at an average of 83. And then Pandya also broke the 200 run mark with 222 at an average of 55. And then uh, David Warner scored 245 runs at an average of 49. And then Rahane took, uh, scored 244 runs at an average of 48. Among the bowlers, there was only one bowler in the entire series who took 10 wickets. That was Nathan coulter -Nile, 10 at 25. The other major wicket-takers, uh, Kuldeep Yadav took 7 at 30. Uh, Kane Richardson took 7 at 22. Kumar took 5 at 25. Chalal took 6 at 28. Bumrah took 5 at 32. And then Pandya took 6 at 31. So, this was a very high-scoring, batting-friendly series. Um, other than the times when Australia threw their wickets away trying to score big runs when the target was getting out of hand, other than in those circumstances, it was a very comfortable batting uh, series. There was no real point where the conditions in and of themselves were creating circumstances where the batsmen were finding that they couldn't score runs quickly, couldn't find themselves comfortable at the crease, so on and so forth. And you would have to say that overall, uh, the 4-1 victory line for India is pr reasonably sensible because... India, after all, are the number one one-day international team in the world. They are at home. This is the beginning of the season. And they are in um, ripe form. And so the fact that they were able to uh, defeat Australia on their home turf in a form of the game that they are very good at should surprise no one. In fact... Uh, I'm pretty sure that a 4-1 victory was reasonably predictable. But the question is, of course, um, to do with the ego and the motivations of Australia. Because Australia ha won the World Cup and they are continuing to try to build up a really good one-day international team so that they can win the World Cup again in 2019. And so when they came over to India... They would have uh, desired victory. They would have wanted to find a way to win this series to, uh, in order to uh, uh, take over the crown of India's of being the number one one-day team in the world. And so this usurping of this uh, number one position would have been something that Australia would have longed for and desired, but... It wasn't a realistic prospect, considering the fact that um, Australia did not go to this tour of India in the best of form, or with all their best players, or with the greatest amount of momentum behind them. Because don't forget that this is um, this is September, so, and Australia last played international cricket. Uh, at the end of last season when they toured India and Bangladesh. And so they've had the three months of winter off. And now suddenly they've come back. And um, their first game of real cricket for this season. And they were not ready for it. So let's just go through some of the factors. So 
uh, Alan Finch own, uh, missed the first two games, and then so he was a big loss. Uh, Glenn Maxwell and Matthew Wade have not been in good form and have been struggling um, to get keep their sp spots in the Australian One Day team. Uh, Peter Hanscom has been impressive, but has not made a big score yet to really justify his position as a permanent spot in the Australian One Day team. And uh, then you have to think that all the pressure is basically on Steve Smith and David Warner, and then a little bit is on um, Travis Head, because they are the only three major run makers that are permanently in good positions. So... People who are promoted up to this team, like um, Marcus Stoinis, have a lot of pressure on their um, and and Hilton Cartwright have a lot of pressure on them because they need to perform in order to make up the gaps in the Australian eleven, where players otherwise might other might otherwise have been. And then we have a look at the Australian bowling attack. So we have out Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood. And with the decision that uh, Nathan Lyon is not going to be playing One Day Internationals, it means that the best uh, best bowlers of Australia were not here. The bowlers were Nathan Coulter-Nile, who's just come off injuries, uh, who's just come off an injury. There's Kane Richardson, who has uh, hasn't cemented his place in the team because uh, he's only been picked here and there, and he happens to get picked on um, particularly flat batting tracks. They get he gets hit around. And then there's Pat Cummins, who has also just come back from injury. Uh, he's been playing steadily for the last six or so months, so he's still on his way back. And then you've got Ashton Agar, who has not been able to cement a permanent place in the Australian One Day team. And finally, James Faulkner, who has been in and out of the Australian team for the last two years. In fact, ever since they won the World Cup, he has been in and out. There isn't really a place for him in the Australian team. He sometimes bats at 8, sometimes bats at 7, sometimes bowls lots of overs, sometimes bowls only a few. It's unclear what his role in the team is, both as a bowler and a batter. And it just seems like he can't get some momentum behind him in order to get lots of games and stay on the field for a long period of time. So, when you look at exactly the situation that Australia were in as they approached this series, then the personnel they brought on the tour, it seems perfectly reasonable to imagine that they are not in a position, they are not ready, they are not prepared to defeat India in India, the best team in the world at One Day International Cricket, in their home conditions, at the beginning of a summer, when... Uh, Players will have had a long and uh, long winter uh, to get off form. So, in the end, I think Australia should be reasonably happy that they were able to win one game from the uh, series. This isn't like what happened four years ago. So, four years ago, Australia came over to India for a one-day series, and Australia nearly won it. But that was a different situation, where you had a much more steady and strong and prepared and informed Australian lineup, and they gave it a real red hot go, but they just fell short in the couple of games which decided who won that series. When you had uh, James Faulkner at the peak of his form, when you had um, George Bailey and Michael Clark doing wonderful things, and when you look at Australia today, they were not in a position where they could have done such wonderful things as what happened four years ago. So I don't think it's reasonable to imagine that we were supposed to be seeing a repeat of what happened four years ago.